Okay, it's um, 8.33, Monday, January the 3rd, 2022. <laughs> yes, that's the first video that I'm time stamping with the 22 at the beginning of it. Some of my subscribers can remember back in October, November, when these two got the C19. And uh, I put out the prayer request call a couple of times. A lot, a lot of people were... Uh, very worried. We got very worried. And um, and then when they got around the bell curve and started coming back up the other side, it was, uh, it was a, a relief, to say the least. As a matter of fact, when I did my Thanksgiving questionnaire at the end, it was, what were you thankful for? And the first thing I said is, I'm thankful that my dad's going to be okay. Because he gave us a scare. <laughs> and so uh, I just really wanted to get their side of the story uh, and you know, find out what their experience was. A lot of you have had the C-19 and and made it through. And I know that there are people watching this that have had loved ones that have died from it. And so we're going to try to be respectful for that. Uh, we're not going to be flippant about this at all. This is a very serious thing. Um, but at the same time, the things that they did to get through it are a little different than what you are typically told to do, and I think their experience might help some people that are going through it. Okay, let's start off with how old are the two of you? Is that okay if we say that? You know, it is. It's, it's important. important. I know this. Yes, but it's it's important to the to two the story. things you never ask a woman: okay. her age and weight. Can we do an approximate then? I don't care. Okay. I'm, I'm 62 years old. Okay, 62 and... You weren't 62 whenever all that happened. You, oh, well, that's 61. right. You were 61. 61 when it happened because your birthday's in November. That's right. Okay, and you're about the same age as her too. Oh, no, I'm almost two years older than her. I'm okay. 64. Okay, so 61 at the time. I'm and 63. I'll be yeah, 64. Yeah, you won't be 64 till February. Yeah. 61 and 63. Um, okay, so I think that puts them into the category of at higher risk. But you got to remember, he's diabetic too. Yes, okay, so dad's diabetic. All right, so mom, uh, when you got it, how bad was it for you? I have to say it's it was like a bad flu for me. But the congestion and the weakness and losing the taste and the smell. Have you got it back yet? Most of my smell and most of my taste, but I still, because I am a cook for the boys at the children's home and I like to taste everything that I make to make sure that the quality is good. I still don't trust it and I'll have other people taste test also. So the taste isn't 100% back yet. But the going back having the strength, oh, the energy to be able to do my work. It was, that was the, said. She said, I. Yeah. yeah, the fatigue, to get yourself back to 100% with the yeah. fatigue, it takes a little while. They said it's one of the last things to come back. Yeah. So what, what was the difference? Why do you think you were able to get through it a little easier? Well, I really feel like that um, doing the selenium, magnesium, vitamins, vitamins, a lot of vitamins. I, I, I did D3, selenium, magnesium, um, K2. Um, I just, I did a lot of vitamins. I'm still doing those vitamins. So where, I mean, did your doctor recommend that you take these vitamins? Some of them he did. Some yeah. of them we found on the internet. Yeah. Okay. And also a lot of lemon water too, right? Every night. Every night, lemon Every water. Every night I do lemon water. And with um, fresh lemon water. Yeah, fre fresh I squeeze, squeeze the lemon. lemon and I put it in chamomile tea, which helps with the immune, and the hot lemon water, and a little bit of uh, some vinegar, ginger, we turmeric. Use apple cider vinegar. Turmeric? Turmeric. And apple cider vinegar? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is like a cocktail yeah. that you guys have come up with every yeah. night. Okay, now let's go through those vitamins one more time because there's, there, like I said, this is more of information for, for people, you know, right. that might, might have just been diagnosed with it. 
Okay, so let's go through your oh, vitamins. Oh, and zinc. It's yeah, zinc. zinc, selenium. Selenium. Magnesium. Magnesium. Um, D3, K2, vitamin C, and... Um, We're also taking vitamin B and yeah, kill. And E. And E. Yeah. So that's the basic ones. You yeah. can't overdo it on the vitamins. Well, I mean, I guess you could. Yeah, yeah, you don't there want to overdo it on magnesium. You don't want to overdo selenium or the, or the, the K2. 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 Yeah. But vitamin C, like if your body takes in too much vitamin C, it just flushes the excess right. out. So you yeah. can't overdo it on vitamin C. Right, but there are some. There are some that you can. Yeah. Right. You got to be careful on some of them. All right, so after you had it uh, for a week or two, Dad started, started showing symptoms. Right. And I have no clue where I got it from. Um, that I, I really don't know where I got it from. But um, yes, and then of course Dad got it, and and I was I was hoping he wouldn't yeah. get as bad as he did. But yeah, he so did get it. Dad is uh, diabetic, or is it? Is it? You know, you're not taking the insulin shot, so I wouldn't say you're full. He, I'm what's called a. Diet control diabetic. Okay. So but you do it, take metformin. Still diet control. Yeah. Okay. And 63. <laughs> so yeah. a little bit more of, of a risk. And um, at least at the time, the, his weight wasn't quite as in. What's the, wor the word for it? So I, I, ideal body <laughs> yeah body mass, mass. body mass index it was a little looks uh, uh, over over that so that that puts you a little more of a risk too there um okay so uh you started showing symptoms and um well i started feeling bad and i took the test and it came back negative so I th we thought okay well we dodged a bullet that uh, you just had a cold or something Evidently, the viral count hadn't got high enough that it showed up, and I took it a week later. Wasn't it a week later? The second test? Yeah. That wasn't quite a week. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that one came back positive. Yeah. And, uh, okay. With the, uh, with the uh, congestion in the lungs and uh, losing... Using sm taste and smell. Was that one of the first and things just to go? general fatigue. Uh, yeah, that's one of the first things. For the you, it was one of the first things. But then it started... Congestion, with, yeah. fatigue. Then it started where he, he was having problems with breathing, his right, fever. Right. Now, so I, I think you guys can also learn, too, that uh, right when you're first showing symptoms, the tests still aren't really totally accurate, at least not in your case. Right. Because they did come back negative. Um, okay, so I think I pretty much had it, but I was on the right, the, the lead edge of it. Right. Okay, so since you were at more of a risk, you guys got very aggressive with your treatments. Well, because he got really sick. Yeah. I mean, he true. got a lot sicker than I did. Started he, having was, trouble with breathing. Yeah, he had a lot more problems with breathing and the fever and. Uh, we were really concerned that he was going to end up in the hospital. Um, we did not want him to be on a respirator. No. no. Because, like, your body gets dependent on... Is that... That's right. Actually, that's not what happens. A lot of people don't understand what happens with, uh, with respirators because what they do is they run you on a much higher content of oxygen. Well, your, body, your lungs aren't made for high contents of oxygen. It'll, it'll actually burn your lungs. Oh. Okay. The high content of oxygen. But it's necessary use. at the time. Well, you got to have it to get the oxygen level into your blood. It's either the high that oxygen that. levels will mess your lungs up over right. a period of time. Even, even oxygen supplement. It's very rare for somebody to go on oxygen and get off of it. Show them the oximeter. Oh, yeah, you still have your oxygen there. Yeah. yeah. And this yeah. is something. That's that, one thing I suggest that everybody have in their home it, to it, deal with COVID yeah. because you need to know your oxygen level. Yeah, because if it drops below 
Really? Uh, really, you want to start getting concerned around 93. Really? Okay. Well, where it gets below 93. The ideal is over 100. No. no. I thought it was. No. What is our ideal? Ideal is uh, 98, probably 9, 97, 98, 99. Yeah. But the 93 here, really. It only goes up to 99. Uh, okay. But really and truly, 93, they didn't worry about it. Because we had a friend that. Um, she was down in the 80s. She actually went down in the 70s. Oof. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So. Where she, uh, got, where she couldn't even climb the stairs to get back in her house. Yeah. Now, with your complications, though, um, you started seeing a doctor. You found it, you, first off, you found a doctor that wasn't going to be pressured by uh, politics, we're going to say, politics. Um, and he was more of a doctor that would go from, like, treatments that other doctors had tried and had shown that they actually worked. And even though there was people in the media that were saying these things are not medically proved and they're not, they're, what's the, I, we're trying to be, we're trying to be discreet here, but. Um, uh, One of the things that he did that I really appreciated was he, he would take blood, he would take Larry's blood. Right. And he would test markers. Certain markers. And. That's what he was treating is the markers. White blood cell count, inflammation, inflammation. inflammation. Well, white blood cell inflammation is and sodium levels. Sodium level. The kidney, the liver. Uh, the, kid, kidney potassium, function, I think. Yeah, potassium, kid, kidney function, liver function. Yeah. So anything that's known to get out of whack with COVID, he was watching. Right. Right, and so for anything that was getting out of balance, he would prescribe something for that. He would treat the markers. He would treat the markers. Because everybody doesn't react yeah, the same that's the thing about with COVID. You cannot treat COVID. You just said COVID twice there. We're, trying, we're saying C-19. Okay. <laughs> Even C-19's going to get you in trouble. Really? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. But, yeah, go, go on what you were saying. Though. That it doesn't. You cannot treat everybody the same with this disease because <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm sorry, the, the dog is scratching his butt on the floor over here. Don't be saying it's that. funny. Edit that one. No, you. it's funny. No, it's look funny. at him. He, look, it's like he knows we're talking about him. He's walking over here. His mm. <laughs> back feet were up in the air. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so aside from all that, okay, so. Uh, they would treat you for the different markers. Yes. Right. And then once those markers started getting back in balance, he would take that off of that medication. Yeah, that medication, would, he'd take it away. Because he said, I do not want you taking more medication than then you. is necessary. Yeah. Right. So it was a very aggressive kind of really keep an eye, monitor, keep an eye on things and treat what is necessary. And then once those markers get up to balance, take off of those, those medications. Right. But I will say that uh, he did not do the find the clonal blantablotties. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did not do that. Um, I mean, what do you think? Did he say that he was not in favor of the blantablotties? He told me it doesn't do any good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this, this is a doctor that's been doing a lot of C-19 patients. And that, yeah, he has seen like 3,000. He said he's yeah. seen in excess of more than 3,000. Yeah, yeah and, it's it's one of those things. It's like you do something a bunch, you're going to start getting better at it. Yeah. But, so he really knew what he was doing. And he had that, this very aggressive, very monitoring. And that's what he said. And I thought, I thought, okay, at day 14 or whatever, I thought, okay, at that point, he's going to start getting better, right? I'm telling the doctor, he's going to start getting better now, right? And he said, you don't know. He said, I've seen people, they'll start doing better, and then they'll take a nosedive. He said, we have to stay aggressive with this. Right. And I okay. was like, oh. But he also prescribed an uh, inhaler yeah. that 
because you, when your breathing starts getting congested like that, the inhaler just kind of opens things up, right? Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of things. Here. So it was basically just like the same kind of inhaler that uh, people with asthma use, mm -hmm. right? So he, he got that. Do you, would you say that helped? Do you use it very much? I used it for probably a week, but I quit using it because I didn't feel like what really happened was he doesn't remember a whole lot. I know. Was, there's he a went lot of the COVID yeah. There's brain. a lot of brain fog that happens when you're but really fighting. You were having inflammation there that started going down, so it was okay. But he had you on something else too for the. Um, well, we took the, the Z pack. The Z pack. We took Z pack. Yeah. That that's a, a vitamin, right? No, it's a it's a uh, antibiotic for your lungs. Okay. That you take. But you also took. That you uh, take it regularly. Steroid regimented. pack too. Yeah, I took a steroid pack and a few yeah. other things. And I also got a COVID rash. On top That's of that. That's right. You yes, got a COVID rash on top of all that. In his mouth, even. Wow. It was. You know, my lips had it scabs was, and stuff on it. You remember that? Yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. You want me to let him know? Yeah. Okay. You actually went on to oxygen at the, the lowest point. You were on uh, an oxygen generator and you were sleeping with the oxygen generator. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So what was that like? It was, very, it was like trying to sleep with a diesel engine running in your room. <laughs> yeah. Because it was loud. loud. It was yeah. loud. Yeah. Oh, but, I mean, at night, it, it was the worst. The night and so... I didn't want to go Your to oxygen sleep goes down whenever you're sleeping anyway because you're just on that that rest state. Yeah. But it was it was going down too low. And so they put it on oxygen. Time or two it went down in the seventies with me. Oh yeah. it did. Mm -hmm. So at one point you were actually like, This is it, this is how it ends. Yeah, I was afraid there was I It's was, a scary feeling, isn't it? Well, yeah. You don't remember a whole lot from that, though, do you? Uh, I remember enough. Yeah. It wasn't any fun. not doing conspiracy theories here. This is from a professional that has seen thousands of C-19 patients and had it himself. And he's a doctor. All right, so when you started coming back out of it, though, I mean, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a relief. Well, and what was really weird that we thought he was going to end up having to, he was, he, they were going to put him in the hospital for was the sodium level. All of a sudden, the, his that was a weird level, one. That was a weird one. Yeah. His sodium level went down, 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 down. And he had to aggressively deal with the sodium level. And he said, at one point, he said, okay, if it goes down anymore, you will have to go in the hospital for this. And then we were like, wow, okay. And sodium, that just means salt. So, you and so at some point, we were like, we were like, he does, he, they were telling him not to drink because he likes to drink a lot of water, um, as most diabetic students drink a lot of water. But they were telling him to cut down on drinking water because they needed the sodium levels to come up. But the thing is, when your sodium levels are dropped like that, you can't just eat a bag of salty pretzels. Right. If you, Jump it up too yeah, fast. You have to you problem. have to raise it slowly. You can't just spike it. Because that'll cause a problem too. Right. So uh, it was drink less water. And it had him on a potassium, kind of like a Gatorade type drink, but not because he's diabetic. Gatorade is very sugary. But it was another um, what was the name of it he had you? It wasn't Pedialyte, was it? No, no. Well we, we did tried Pedialyte that. a little bit. As a matter of fact, we still got a few bottles. It was in um, what was the name of it? I don't remember. Anyway, they put him on something else that um, that he could drink twice a day. And then they ended up putting him on not a lot of salt tablet. It was, what, salt tablet twice a day? Yeah, once in the morning, once at night. Yeah. And that, they just, they, they said, and don't drink, don't drink, don't drink. It was really bothering him because he's used to drinking so much. And it's like. Yeah. Okay, but that was what was really weird is what got him at, in the recovery time was low sodium. Low sodium, but the, another, the, the the inflammation was another thing that got us like, where is the inflammation? 
the, the, the blood work kept saying there's inflammation, but they're like, where, where at? And yeah. he couldn't figure out where it was. It just treating it. I think it was my own. Yeah. It could. I think it was. It yeah. probably was, yeah. But anyway, it, the fact, what I really appreciated about that doctor was the fact that he treated markers and didn't, you can't treat every COVID patient the same because everybody reacts different. And what I really liked is that he did that. Right. And he looked at me where I took him in to begin with. I said, I had COVID. I didn't have all these problems. He is. He's, he said, if you start having problems, you, you start going downhill, you get in here immediately. And I was like, okay. But one of the things that bothered me at the end of his, because he just seemed so fragile, very fragile when he was coming out of this, I was afraid to take him out because of people having RSV. Um, These are flu, respiratory things. Right? Yeah. Flu, RS, RSV, bronchitis, all these things going around right now. Strep throat. Yeah, yeah these and things did pneumonia. not just disappear. They're still out there. And so I thought, I cannot let him out. I know he's not in quarantine now, but I looked at the doctor and I said, listen, I'm really afraid for, it, for him to be out and going to church or anything because he just seems so fragile to me right now. And he said, I want to tell you something. Number one, um, if he gets something else, we'll treat it. Number two, I'm never going to tell someone not to go to church. And number three, do not live in fear. Yeah. And I was like, that's a good doctor. Okay, right gotcha. Yeah, that's a good doctor. Um, okay, so... Uh, you how long from from that point when you started started to the recovery till now? I mean, well, I didn't write down the. I guess I should have wrote down. Well, really, you're here. breathing. You're just now starting to feel like you can really yeah, take a deep even breath now, in there. I'm, I'm I'm still recovering in my lungs. Okay. So I mean, I told you what yesterday. It feels like I can take a nice deep breath of air, and it doesn't hurt now. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so uh, their experience, you guys have a pretty good idea for what their experience was like now. Um, but if you could tell somebody that was in the high-risk range in their 60s, um, you know, and they've just been diagnosed with the C-19, you know, what, what, what would be your, the thing that you would tell them? Get on vitamins, drink hot lemon water. I know that sounds crazy. And find a doctor that will yeah. aggressively treat markers. Aggressively treat markers and not be coerced by popular media and politics to not use treat. treatments. So he was actually prescribed and used Viberblexin. No, that's too far away. <laughs> that's close enough. They know what that means. Um, but yeah, he, he was actually prescribed and used that. You know, even though they're you know even Saturday Night Live wants but to say that it's not medically proven or it's you know whatever. You, you find well, doctor. That's... Since when do you take the word of a comedian exactly. for medical purposes? Come on. Man. I, know. I know. But the other side of that is listen to the doctors. Don't listen to the comedians. You know, they say, okay, it's... it's Don't it's, listen to the comedians animal, on CNN either. It's animal medication. Yeah. But we went to a compound pharmacy and they made it for humans. It's been made for humans for oh, decades yeah. now. Yeah, they've been using it. Well, yeah. it's been used since the, the 70s yeah, or 80s. It's, yeah, like it's like 50 very years of an antiviral medication. No, it. it's not an antiviral. It's not. It's got antiviral properties, but it doesn't. it's not an antiviral. It's a dewormer. It really is a dewormer. Yeah. But anyway, okay, so their message is you can't treat it. If you start showing symptoms, don't you, wait. Do not wait. You have to be aggressive with it. Mm -hmm. Don't treat it like a case of the flu where you're just going to sweat your way through it. Um, as much as you can, stay active. Uh, 
Get That's up. another thing the yeah. doctor said. Do not lay down. Do not do not treat do it nothing. as yeah. Do not treat it as something that you're going to get over by just resting. I, I really feel like that's part of the reason why I had such a problem is because I did sit in this chair quite a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah get, I get up and move as much as your lungs will allow you to at whatever point you're at. Get, get up energy. your energy. Get up and do whatever you can. Move around. Don't. Don't treat it like a flu where, you know, with the flu, you just need to rest and drink fluids. But with the C-19, you have to stay active. You have to get up and move. And get out and breathe fresh air. Get into the sun. Yep. Um, keep yourself as active as you can. And, and that's what I, I think the doing. sun is what caused my... I think, because I didn't get that coat. I didn't get that rash well, until I got out into the sun that one day. That's, that's true, rash yeah. started. But, I mean, did it really cause it, though? I don't know, or if it helped trigger it. I don't know. I think it triggered it. Maybe if you had left your shirt on. <laughs> he was trying to get D3. I know. He wanted to get the D3. Because he was like, I need to have D3, so he, he took the shirt off. And, yeah, and then and he so got... I didn't take it off. I just uncovered my back and turned around. Oh. And then got a rash. It was a weird thing, boy. Man, that stuff is weird. Anyway, okay. So, yes, uh, do not wait. Do not treat it like the flu, like you're going to work your way through it. Um, stay active. And then we most actually important. had uh, uh, another couple that we were very good friends with that did wait too long, and they did pass away. Both yeah. of them did. There is a, a neighbor that I have at the flea market, had at the flea market, that made handmade knives. And he started showing symptoms, and he treated it like, the, like a cold or like a flu where you just... Um, sweat your way through it and he was at the flea market just sweat pouring off of him because he was trying to sweat his way through it and um, everybody around him kept telling him man go to the doctor and he, he finally did but it was too late then he, he passed away from it um, so this is not something that you can you know superman your way through or sweat your way through or bull, well, bull your way is, through it, you it, really it, have to if it goes to your lungs like it did with me yeah. then you got to You've got to have help. Yeah. And you find can't survive without air. And, and find a doctor that does like what he did that is going to keep a very close eye on it, do lots of blood work once or even twice a week, check your levels and treat the levels and and really get on top of things and really stay on top of them. And and until until you start to recover, even after you start to recover, it takes though. a lot of work on the doctor's part. And yeah. a lot of doctors are very. It's hard to find a good doctor that'll do all that he did. Yeah, no, I know. He, I mean, I, I we we knew a nurse. This is the truth. We know a nurse that does ICU for COVID patients. Well, don't use the word. Oh, C patients. She does. She's an ICU nurse for. C patients, okay? Uh-huh. And she said, because I called and was talking to to them, or, you know, the mother and the daughter, that's the nurse, and I told them all that the doctor was doing for, for Larry, and she's like, you are really getting some excellent treatment. She, she said, that, that's probably better than you would have gotten in the hospital. Yeah. And I'm telling you, she's a nurse in the hospital. Yeah. And that's what she was saying. So if you watch the news, then most of the time they're going to tell you that uh, all you can do for C-19 is go back home and try to rest and, um, drink, if, plenty of fluids. and drink, drink lots of fluids. In your case, was actually hurting you. And um, if it gets bad enough, we'll put you on a respirator, and that's all that they can do for you, other than the blonicone or blantablotis. Um, and that's what you know the people on CNN will want you to believe. But there are, in fact, lots and lots of treatments um, that 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 can be used. It's a finding a doctor that's willing to not listen to the the politics and actually use the treatments that they know about. And that, that goes for the, the, you know, the medications, the blood work, and the vitamins. And a lot of those vitamins he recommended. Oh, yeah. He called it a COVID cocktail. A oh. COVID cocktail. I shouldn't say. Oh, okay. A C-19 cocktail. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. All right. So one last time here at the end, uh, if you could remember all of them, the, tell us the, the, the cocktail that you did again. I wish I had my paper, but it was, it's selenium, D3, K2, zinc, magnesium, um, vitamin C. Kelp. Well, we we do kelp. That's that. That's just a normal his, thing. Yeah, right? that wasn't on his. Thing. Whatever other multivitamin you like to take. Um, but your... there was some that he had on his, and then some that we've just seen when you're looking all that up. Yeah. But anyway. Your vitamin C, and then your lemon water, and the lemon water had uh, used a apple cider vinegar. Well, I mean, we added it to it. Right. Fresh squeezed lemon, lemon. apple cider vinegar. Um, chamomile tea, ginger, and turmeric, is that it? Turmeric, yeah. Tumeric. So that's basically like a tonic. Yeah. To go along with the, the lemon, fresh lemon water. And that was every day. And that, every day. And it helps if you put a little stevia in there too. It makes it taste a little better. Oh, and a little bit of honey. Oh, yeah, and some honey, yeah. I forgot the honey. Yeah, so a little bit honey. honey. Yeah, yeah. coat your throat a little bit. You know, a spoonful of honey makes the cinnamon. <laughs> Down, whatever it is they say. Medicine. Yeah. So that is the message to you guys. I hope that this gets out there at least to, I mean, if if you're not um, diagnosed and, and scared and worried because you've just been diagnosed with C19, uh, if you know somebody that's in a high-risk category that has just been diagnosed, then um, send this video to them so that they can learn from mom and dad the what you know what they did in their experience of fighting fighting this thing off because i mean the, at least in dad's case it it, it was um it was scary <laughs> it, was, it was probably pretty much a life saver seriously uh, he could have died if he didn't have the proper treatments he really could have it could have been that could have been it it's weird that i've been working in crowds like this for a year and a half well, you may have had it. Some people have it. I got Some a cold people. a couple of times. I bet you had it and didn't know it. I don't know. I think you had it and didn't know I, it. It seems like if I would have had it, then I would have gotten, like, you know, lo losing my taste or no, something. No, not everybody does. And I can tell you that there's people that have said it was no more than a cold. Now, the, the first time that I got a cold, and it was after being in a big crowd of kids at the Port Charlotte Fair, um... I, it, at the at the worst point, I actually blew my nose, and the whole tissue was full of blood. See, and that's he and they were saying blowing that blowing blood all the time. Yeah, you had that. You had that happen. So I guess it really is kind of possible. I may have had it. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. I think that's the best. I'm not even going to monetize this video. I'm just going to put it up. But guys, that's going to be it. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.